Tokyo born and Berlin based pianist Kotaro Fukuma. Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> About his newest CD release mm -hmm. called Dunka. The CD is going to feature works by Modest Mussorgsky. And maybe you want to tell us more. Oh, Mussorgsky, Michael Glinka, um, Piotr Tchaikovsky, Mili Barakirev, and uh, Igor Stravinsky. So there are five composers, Russian composers. Yeah. So this is already your seventh studio album. Yes. Before that, you had albums with uh, Schumann, Takemitsu, Liszt, Al uh, Albanese, uh, Chopin, what else? Debussy. Debussy. Okay. So this is your first CD with entirely Russian mm -hmm. compositions. What mm -hmm. made you decide to do this CD at this point in time? Um, so these last years, I've been playing many of the. Uh, French music and romantics like uh, Chopin and Liszt and I wanted to change a little bit of the style of my repertoire and I thought Russian music would be the perfect choice uh, because I had a, such a big interest in it and passion and, and it was one of my dreams to record pictures at an exhibition of Mussorgsky and I discovered this wonderful transcription of Firebird by Guido Agosti a couple of years ago. And then I, I thought it would be a nice idea or nice, nice to combine these two uh, major Russian works in one album um, and also some other pieces that are not well known. So another piece on your album is Dumka by Tchaikovsky mm -hmm. and that's also the title of your album. Yes. Why did you choose that? Well, um, Dumka is actually a Ukrainian word which means um, thinking of, or thoughts, but it is a musical term. Um, so the Dumka has always more than two parts and one is always a uh, lyrical, very melancholic, slow, slow music and another one is a joyful, dance-like, um, yeah, joyful, light, light music. And then it, it comes always uh, alternately. So one is slow and it then gets danced like a joyful, and then uh, and again uh, very slow and melancholic, and again danced like it. So Tchaikovsky's Chay Dumka um, is a really wonderful, beautiful piece that I played uh, when I was 15 years old. And that was the very first piece that I studied of Russian music with a professor. So I, I have a particular relationship with this, this work and so I, I wanted to entitle this, this album. And also Dumka, since it has this meaning of a melancholic part and the dance, um, I thought that could be really the theme of this album because the pictures at the exhibition, Firebird, have also those two elements. And Glinka is a very lyrical, um, it, is, it was actually the song um, and a transcription for piano solo by Balakirev, and, but it's a song. And uh, Islame is a really joyful dance. So it, it just passes. So lots of that contrast in contrast. Russian music and in between the pieces on right. your CD. Basically. Yes. In 2009, you actually traveled to Russia for a couple of days. How was that? Yeah, so that was the only time I, I was in Russia so far. I hope I, I have another occasion to go there. But I, that was the time I was working on Glinka's The Lark and the Islame by Balakiev and some other scrubbing and stuff. And I really wanted to see Russia and especially Russia in winter. Mm. So I decided to go in December, lots of snow, and it was um, kind of a typical uh, touristic uh, trip. But I, I was very lucky to, to be able to stay in a Russian family. Mm. It was um, a friend of mine uh, who accepted to help me at home. And uh, so I, I could see the really real life of Russian people, uh, the culture, and also he took me to all the beautiful places and, and I was so fascinated by, by the beauty and uh, you know this feeling of the cold uh, but uh, you can find lots of happinesses uh, in, in, in this very uh, cold uh, temperature and that was something special and it, it inspired me a lot to play music. 
pieces like Isla May are basically famous for their complexity and do you feel that playing a very complex work is more joyful, more fun and demanding than playing a less complicated work? Or? Um, when I perform uh, the music on the stage, uh, whatever, I mean, no matter how difficult the piece is, I always think of the, the images that I have and I, I don't think about really the complexity or difficulties. Mm -hmm. I always have a joy and just the emotions you know, yeah. towards the music. Um, but when I work on it, study it, of course it's a different story and I have to um, pick up all the difficulties or the problems and I have to find out the solutions. And, but that's also a fun part of the musician life and um, it's endless work and um, even if I, I'm convinced with my interpretation one day, um, it can be changed next day or one year later. Mm -hmm. And so every time I, I play one thing, one piece, um, I always try to discover something new. And that's, that's uh, marvelous things about the musician life, I think. So while recording your album, what was the most demanding piece for you? Well, to me, everything was difficult, of course, but um, particularly Islamay was most difficult in this album to record because it depends so much uh, precision and all the notes have to be really clearly sounded. And um, it's not only the virtuosic um, aspects, of course, there are lots of notes, um, but you have to bring much emotion and characters and, you know, the joyful uh, atmosphere and it's got also humor and uh, everything has to come together and then, uh, despite of all the notes, the emotion has to be stay uh, at the end and that was really tricky uh, to do. So you mentioned that Dumka was also one of the very first Russian pieces mm -hmm. that you ever learned when you were 15 mm -hmm. and now you're 32 and you're finally recording it on an album and how did your perception or understanding of the piece change over the years? Well, to tell the truth, I wasn't feeling very comfortable or at home playing Russian music, uh, although I, have, I had a passion and I really loved Dumka. And um, so I didn't play this piece for many years and I took it back uh, for the recording. But in the meantime, I, I learned lots of other Russian stuff, including uh, piano concertos. And um, I deepened my understanding, interpretation uh, of Russian music and Russian culture, other arts or reading literature. And I started learning Russian language, just ochin nimroshka. But um, for me, it's very important to, to understand the language as well, um, to get used to the sound mm. of the language. And um, also, the, the personality counts as well. When I was 15 years old, I was sort of typical Japanese and I, I didn't dare to express much in daily life. And um, in the, the beginning of Dumka, there are not many notes, but um, you know, every single note has a meaning and you have to put much emotion. So I didn't have uh, that kind of approach to it. But now I, I see a totally different uh, dimension mm. in, in it. So it's been a quite difference, I think. Firebird was actually a piece for the orchestra. Mm -hmm. And how is it playing such an orchestral piece on a single instrument like yeah, the piano? It was a big challenge for me. But actually it's not only the Firebird, but the other two pieces have also strong connection to orchestra. Mm -hmm. The pictures at exhibition was orchestrated by Ravel and there's a beautiful um, orchestration of uh, Islami as well by Lyapunov. And when I worked on those pieces, I studied also orchestral scores and listened to some recordings to understand um, you know, the effect of each element or the character and um, why the composer or the transcriber use those er instruments mm -hmm. to, for uh, each element. And also I was trying to uh, 
have a vision, um, con specific uh, scenery or visions, and then transcribe, transform it into the music. That was my one of my goals of this album.